Hi, welcome to this quick tool review. I recently got this Travers uh, Tools OTMT uh, tool grinder and uh, you might be thinking, well this review is going to be about this, but actually I don't have enough experience with it yet to give you a decent review, so I'll hold off for that to another time. But getting this actually inspired me to look into uh, another solution for this product and let me just go a little further into it. So. This tool is designed to run at 3450 RPM and that's pretty fast. It pulls off material really quickly and I thought it might be nice to be able to slow this down, but this is a single speed device. Uh, they did provide a mechanism to cool, which you can do a drip water feed if you want. It's got a valve and a uh, little water reservoir. But if you've seen any of my other videos, you know I'm really hesitant to get water any near my tools, anywhere near my tools, especially cast iron like this. I, I just rust drives me crazy. So I've been holding off on that, and I thought maybe if I could slow it down, that would be great. And I found a solution for this. Uh, let me power this guy up for a sec and let you hear it. So it runs really nicely and smoothly, not a lot of vibration. Um, but when you turn it off, it goes and goes and goes, which is actually not a negative for the uh, tool. It means it's got good bearings and there's a fair amount of mass, so a lot of momentum and not a lot of friction to slow it down. Um, but I was looking for a way to maybe slow the speed down, so I started to look. This is a 110 volt, half horsepower motor, single phase. So I was looking for a solution for that, and I ran across this. So I, I have several of these, and uh, these, this is a variable frequency drive, but typically most of them are for three phase, you know, say 240 single phase to three phase or three phase to three phase. This one actually is 110 volt, 2.2 kilowatt. Um, Huan Yang, I think I've got the pronunciation right, but if not, I apologize. Um, model HY02D211B. It takes in three phase 110, which doesn't exist, but I'll explain more about that later. It uh, handles 50 hertz or 60 hertz uh, coming in, and it'll put out 110. So it's single phase in, single phase out. It's pretty simple to wire. Um, it's the same wiring scheme for the power as the other models. Uh, they're three phase models, so it has an RST input, which uh, you can hook the 110 up to any two of the three phases. The output is UVW, and again, you can hook the output up to any two of the three phases. Uh, it's got a ground, a common ground for everything, and um, don't forget to hook up the jumper between P plus and PR, which is a load resistor for slowing things down. Um, it's a jumper in this case, because you don't need one. Um, you can remote some of the controls. Um, I was just playing around here with speed control with a pot, uh, start and stop, but it turns out that these are these are push button momentary switches and what it really wants is latching. So in any case that was just an experiment and that's why it's just sort of kludged in here. Um, it works just fine. So I threw some tails on this guy and uh, put uh, a socket for the output and a plug for the input and uh, just going to show you a couple things. So if you're wondering why the LED display is hard to read, it's because it's multiplexed and the camera's uh, taking pictures at 30 frames a second and uh, so it will capture that scanning and may make it hard for you to read, which I apologize for. Um, so, uh, one of the things the variable frequency drives do is they use pulse width modulation to generate different frequency sine waves. They simulate a sine wave, which by the time it gets to the motor, the motor sees as a sine wave. Not perfect, uh, but close enough. So there are some caveats with using one, but and I'll describe those in a moment. Um, let's just power this guy up. So what it does is when you tell it to run, it starts from zero and slowly increases the frequency of the output at 110 uh, until you reach what your setting is. And I've got it set for 60 hertz. If you were elsewhere in the world, 50 hertz. But being in the States, uh, I set it for 60. So here it is starting up. And you notice it sounds a little bit different. So you can change the clock frequency on this guy through uh, a programming setting that will make that a lot less audible, but as you increase the clock frequency, uh, you start to get more losses in the motor, and you will heat it up a bit. So I have opted not to uh, not to change the clock frequency, so you do hear it. Um, adjusting speed is pretty straightforward. Um, you can either do it remotely, you can buy the control panel that has a pot built in, or you can simply just manually adjust it here. Uh, I'm gonna control it by 10 hertz at a time, so you hear it slowing down, 50 hertz, 40, 30, 20, 10. So 
This is an interesting little tidbit of this sort of uh, uh, product is that normally if I were you to use a Variac to slow this down, you wouldn't have much torque because you're actually lowering the voltage to slow it down. But this device keeps the voltage the same, changes the frequency. So you actually keep most of your torque. Um, let me put that back up. So you can speed it up. You can even go over 60 hertz all the way to 400 hertz. By the way, I've been going in 10 hertz increments. It does fractions of hertz increments if you want. So you can hear that speed up, right? Well, really important caveat to be aware of is that, you know, everything was designed to run at its ideal operating speed, which is 340 RPM. The wheels, the motor, so you need to be very careful if you go over that because you can damage the motor. More importantly, the wheels can be thrown apart and really injure you. So, you know, be very careful before you make a move like that. On the downside with slowing things down, let me stop it. So when you stop it, it also has an advantage that it will slow it down much faster than normal because it's lowering the, the frequency and forcing the motor to follow it. Um, you'll notice it's still coasting a little bit, but it it has almost no uh, no uh, drive left. There's actually no voltage on it. That was just coasting the last little bit. Um, so running slow speed, there are a couple caveats. One is is that some devices, like my grinder over here, which I also you know might use it on, um, has a centrifugal clutch, and the centrifugal clutch uh, puts in the starting circuit, which is a capacitor, resistor, or some sort of loading device to you know, to switch phase to make this induction motor start. And uh, uh, if you run it too slow, that circuit can be thrown in. And uh, if you do that, you'll be driving the circuit when it's not supposed to be driven and you can damage things. So be very careful about what motors you drive it with. Um, also, uh, the being pulse width modulated, you've got sharp edges, which are high frequencies. And... Uh, Inductors uh, tend to respond to uh, high frequencies by resisting change in current. And so you can end up with high voltage spikes. And one of the caveats with using one of these is if the insulation on the windings of the motor can't handle the high uh, voltage spikes, you could break down that insulation, cause shorting between windings, and damage your motor. So something to think about. Um, one of the advantages of pulse width modulation is that you can get a 2.2 kilowatt uh, unit in this really small package with one tiny fan. If this were a 2 kilowatt transformer, it would be several feet cube, easily. Um, so it's very compact and very efficient, but you know there are some caveats. Um, it won't work on some types of motors like in some fans, uh, but it will drive most most motors that you'll find around the, uh, the workshop, just be careful on how you choose to use it. Um, for me, I specifically want to make this guy go slower and uh, keep the torque so that I could uh, grind tools more carefully since I'm not the most dexterous person that lets me uh, go slower and more carefully. So that's about all I have on this guy. Um, I could get a lot more technical, but I think I'll hold off on that. This is a quick tool review. And I'd like to point to thank one of my viewers. This is the second version of this video. I deleted the first one because he pointed out some really serious errors in my explanation of how things work. And so I appreciate him and thanks for keeping me straight. There's enough bad information on YouTube and the rest of the internet without me adding to it. So um, I hope you find this useful and thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time.